Hello everyone and welcome to my talk. Today my topic is passive construction in Ihanzo or passive near construction. So here are the contents. First we're going to look at the two verb groups of passive constructions. Then we're going to look at the elicitated tenses group 1, group 2a and b. The addition of the ig morpheme and the rules and the passive in the simple past. And in the end we're going to look at the small excuses into the conditional passive. So, first of all, the two groups of passive constructions. By looking at verbs and how they change under different constructions, we can divide them into two different groups, group one and two being regular but using different mechanisms. The elicitated tenses were the following. Simple past, present perfect and will future are also looked at the conditional, although to a lesser extent more on that later. First, we're going to look at the first group in the future. On the left, we have the following sentence. In the future active, Elelo umuhumba ukugula mutogo, which translates to today the boy will buy the cow. Here, ku is the future tense marker regardless of active or passive. In comparison, we have the following sentence. Elelo ingombe ikugulwa, which means today the cow will be bought. Here we have a W morpheme, which is added to the verb stem to express the passive. Other than that, the, st the verb stem stands, stays the same. And in comparison, we have the present perfect. First, the following sentence on the left in the active. Ilelie umuhumba ukugulie inombe, which means today the boy has bought the cow. Here, gul is the verb stem and ile is the present perfect morpheme. So on turtle, we get guie. In comparison, we have the same thing in the passive, ilelo ingombe igulwe, which means today the cow has been bought. Here the W is added to the verb stem to express the passive, and this overrides the J in the stem. And in comparison, we have group 2a. Here the stem ends in a voiced consonant, and we, first we're going to look at the will future. Here on the left, we have a will future. Sentence in the active, elelo umuhumba ukugulia ingombe, which means today the boy will sell the cow. And in comparison, in the passive, we have elelo ingombe ikuguligwa, which means today the cow will be sold. Here we have an ig, which is added to the stem, and, uh, and as we have seen before, the j is changed to a w. And we can say that the addition of the ig could be explained by the occurrence of the l, j, and y. The l is a voiced approximant, same as the j and the y. And they all come together. And the last approximant, the j, is del deleted. So we have, uh, in total, we get something like guligwa. And here, in comparison, we have the same thing in the present perfect. First, we're going to look at the active. Ilelo umuhumba wamigulia ingombe, which means today the boy has sold the cow. Here, the wami morpheme expresses the present perfect active and consists of the W as the subject marker, the A as the past marker, and the me morpheme as the object marker. And com in comparison, we have the same thing in the present perfect passive. The sentence being ilelo ingombe ikugulig. Which means today the cow has been sold. Here we have a similar transformation to the one on the previous side. Ile is the past tense marker and W is the passive marker. And in the will future, we have the following sentence on the left. We can see the will future in the active. Ilelo umunansu ukumiki leka ingombe, which means today the boy will treat the cow. And in the passive, we have ilelo ingombe ikukulekwa numonanso. So the stem stays exactly the same. There's only a W added to express the passive. So instead of kileka, we have kilekwa. And the ku again is the future tense marker, and the e is in, in, is the, is, takes its form from the ingombe. So we have. In total, we have iku kilekwa. Now, in the present perfect, first in the active, 
the sentence on the left being Elele umonanzo umekile kile in nombe, which means today the boy, a girl has treated the cow. Here the ile morpheme, which expresses the past tense, is added to the kilek as the verb stem. And in the comparison, we have the same thing, ilelo ingombe ikilikilwe numuhamba. Today the cow has been treated by the girl. The W expresses the passive aspect, while the ile expresses the past tense, as we have seen on the other slides. And here are more examples for the addition of the IG, so we can get a better feeling in which cases the IG is added. First, we have ikupumigwa, which means will be given away. M, here being a noise nasal consonant. And we have ikuzun sigma, which means will be divorced. Here S is a voiceless fricative, but N is a voice nasal, W being again a voice approximant. And we have ikugulangigba, which means will be sold repeatedly. Here J is a voice plosive or stop, and N is a voice nasal. And we have ikuaeligwa, which means uh, here A and E are unwound vowels, vowels, L is a voiced approximant. And of course, some more examples in which cases the IG is not used. So we can better understand what cases um, permit the IG from being used. So we have iku hekwa, which means we be laughed at. Here K is a voiceless plosive, and we have iku zulwa, which means will be shaved, L being a voice approximant, and iku zenzwa, which means will be slaughtered. N is a voice nasal, Z is a voice fricative, and we have iku tenwa, which be, means we'll be married. So in total, I have found five rules in which cases the IG is added. First, in rule number one, we have two voiced approximant at the W. In rule number two, we have a voice nasal other than N, for example, an M plus a W, adding an IG, or we have a voice nasal and a voiceless fricative and a W, also an IG. Or we have a voice nasal and a voice plosive, like a P, and also an IG. Or we have two un unrounded vowels, like an A and an E, and a voice approximate like a L and a W, also adding an IG. And the total here, we have the difference between one group one and two. In group number one, no J morpheme is added in the real future active, but in the real future passive, a W is added. A J morpheme is added in the present perfect active, and in the present perfect passive, the J changes to a W. On co in comparison, in group number two, a J morpheme is added in the real future active, and an IG is added in the real future passive, and, uh, and the J is changed to a W, and the J is added in the present perfect active, same as the uh, in group number one, but the L is deleted and IG is added. And of course, the J becomes a W. And now to the passive in the simple past. Here we have the following sentence. Ike negwa azaki lechi we nunene, which means the drink was bought by me. Here aza is the passive marker of the simple past, or rather an auxiliary verb. Chil is the verb stem. Ile is, as, as we have seen before, the past tense marker. And in comparison, we can take a look at the following sentence. Unene in decile kinegwa, which means I'm bringing the drink. And we can see that the, there is an ile, but this this ile we see here is not actually a passive marker. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, it's not actually a past tense marker, like we see at the top of the slide. And another example being India aza igulwe igulo, which means the food was bought yesterday. Here the verb stem is the same as the one in the present perfect with ile marking the past tense. And of course we have the aza added. And in conclusion, the only thing differentiating the simple past from the past tense perfect is the auxiliary verb aza. And for the last topic, we're going to look a little bit into the conditional passive 
Here the sentence is India as a isegua nuzese, which means the food could be bought by us. Here again we have the other as the uh, in the passive marker W, the as the conditional marker of the standard conditional, and in con conclusion the conditional has its own marker being the Z, which is compatible with the passive marker we have seen before. So in total we have a verb which has the all the function of the passive and the conditional and we add all of the functions and it's like a um, verbs in the Hanzo, they work like puzzle pieces and we build them all together using the different functions and the different markers. And some open questions. How do the passive construction change in relation to other tenses like present co continuous, past continuous and going to future? And I think there isn't actually something like a going to future because the real future already shows all the information we need. And is there a similar mechanism when the object becomes plural? And of course, are there notable patterns for the conditional plural? Which all of these questions need further examination and a lot of other examples. And in the end, thank you very much for your attention. Spasiba za vnimanje. Well, thank you very much, Peter, for that presentation. I know that you were working through a lot of data with a lot of different sort of variables going on here. Um, and uh, I wonder if you could let us know, like, as you were working this out, what was sort of the biggest challenge that you encountered as you were kind of working through this data and trying to find patterns? Um, I think it was the, actually the transcription because when you listened, uh, I had to listen to everything hundreds of times because sometimes you hear like an L or a J or you can, or you can think maybe it's this consonant, but maybe it's another consonant. And then you're going to, you're looking at maybe a pattern, but then you see something that isn't supposed to be there. And, if, and you think like, oh, this makes everything destroys all of the patterns so you're looking again oh okay that's that's actually a w or something or a j and then everything kind of makes sense i appreciate that i see a few smiles from our uh, from our participants here in the audience and i think that that's probably quite a familiar um quite a familiar feeling of um of confusion but that's how we learn when we're working with uh data do we, and I should say, um, if anybody does have any questions, do feel free to raise your hand using the uh, raise hand um, function in the uh, chat. Or if you would like, you can uh, request to be unmuted. If you don't want to uh, directly ask a question, you can write your question in the chat module and I'll read it out um, so we can uh, discuss it. But I see that uh, Martin Mouse has his hand up. Um, Martin, do feel free to go ahead. Uh, yeah, first for the, for my information, uh, you were talking about J. Uh, what 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 do you mean with with the J? Is it J or Y? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that is clear. Um, and then it's interesting complex data with the two different shapes of the of the passive morpheme. Uh, if that's the case, so do, I wonder, do you have any indication of of did you ask for verb forms? With eek, but without w, and without passive uh, meaning. Mm. Do you have any state of verbs with eek? No, um, no. I, I, I mostly I took in comparison the different active and passive, and then I looked what exactly is the difference between right. them, and and when you tried the uh, the ones with the with the eek, the, did you try to have it with the other form with just the w? Um, I think... no, that wasn't my main focus. Okay. Because I already had so many different forms for, because I looked at many different verbs. So that yeah. would as a as a little bit of a contribution, and I think that Stephen can probably help us with this as well. Is um in Ihanzu with the stative, we don't we don't get a tremendous amount of ik for stative in uh, in Ihanzu. We mm. get some. Uh, but not a tremendous amount. So it would it would be look addable, but um, maybe we'd need maybe the uh, uh, it's not as it's not as productive as in uh, as in Swahili, for example. 
Yeah. Do we have any other questions or contributions? I just wanted to ask, I always a bit of clarity on the, the whole J, the glide situation with, especially the first example you showed with, I think it was cell, right? Could you go back to that slide? So I suppose okay. mm -hmm. the the question I have is about, so sometimes you get the J being deleted, right? It mm -hmm. seems like, um, and then you've got these two groups, sometimes with a J and sometimes without a J in certain scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, and my question is, do you do you conceive of this J in the kind of the, the group with the, the Jful group as being an, a part of the verb root proper, or is that an ex an you know an extension of suffix of some sort, which is then mm, I think it's a suffix removed with okay. And so do you have a kind of unified analysis of the the potential function of this suffix, or is it not that unifiable from what you've seen? Um, I think. Uh, um, let me think. So, gul is the verb stem, and ile is the present perfect morpheme. So, what exactly is the the j? I think it's. Um, I thought about it. I think it's maybe something to do with with the voice. But is it someone do, doing the action? I think because it's in here in this example, it's the boy. So maybe there's a different more different suffix for a different person. So when when exa for example when there are not one boy or two boys, or maybe maybe when the person changes, maybe there is like a different more suffix for every one of them. So my um, my intuition is that, and I've not had a look at this in much detail, um, is that you get, if you get a lateral before, then often if the suffix has a lateral, the, the lateral will just become a J, become a glide. Because mm -hmm. um, you get this if you try and add, say, like applicatives onto things that end in L, or if you have a double applicative, then you get like a L rather than just a L or L. -l. And um, I should jump in and say applicatives are uh, additional morphemes that you can add to the end of a verb in many Bantu languages. And in Ihanzu, many applicatives have this shape eel. So again, it's a it's a lateral. Go on, go on, Stephen. So yeah, yeah I, I just wonder whether some of the J group. Sorry, Martin, you were no, saying. No, no, go away, go on. So I just wonder whether some of the J behavior you're seeing is some sort of dissimilation between laterals. I'm not sure that would explain all of it necessarily. Um, but maybe it's just because I haven't had time to assimilate all of the the uh, the rules and the data that you've shown us. But yeah, just a thought. So we may need to look a little bit at phonology rather than yeah. uh, rather than just uh, morphology here, Peter. Mm -hmm. Mark, you had something that you wanted to contribute there for a second. No, no. I, th I think it's palatalization. Okay. But I mean, uh, yeah, it's nice to see the data. I uh, would love to start uh, checking all sorts of things <laughs> rather than shouting. Could it be this? Could it be that? Yeah. Yeah. The double one. What what Stanislav says. So so Stanislav is uh, is giving us a uh, is giving us a, uh, a suggestion here that eel, which would be an applicative, and then the ele perfect would would result in something like ilie. And Stephen gives us a, an enthusiastic, uh, an enthusiastic agreement there. Uh, so something for us to look at, um, Peter, in uh, our data. Maybe go back and uh, and reanalyze it together. That might be nice. Lutz uh, throws out there. Maybe look at Zulu, uh, which of course is another um, Bantu language uh, spoken rather further south, but um, clearly with some relevant um, with some relevant uh, behavior. Uh, Lutz, do you want to uh, expand on that in any sense? Uh, just, just briefly. Uh, yeah, yes. Um, on that one, just briefly. Just Zulu also has very curious, you know, palatalization or spirantization facts with the extensions, um, both in the passive but also with you know with diminutives as well. Um, and that you know that really looks very phonological. So lots of people have worked on that. That's a very good description in in Doak's grammar even. 
Um, and it looks, I mean, it's different from this. And, you know, I mean, it's a very different location, of course, but it's, the phonology looks, you know, at least it's interesting, I think, to look at just to get an inspiration uh, what happens in other languages. And, you know, the, the morphology, of course, is very similar. Um, but uh, so the other question I was I was interested in was the was the the za the the z a morpheme um, because I'm not sure I could see from the data so in some of the data it's just za there is no w but in other examples maybe on slide fifteen sixteen um, it looked like there was both za and and a w. And I couldn't quite see what the end this yes, this one. So it's Aza mm -hmm. and then Chile Chui Chile. So the, the W is part of the lexical stem. The W stands for the passive marker. Ah, sorry. So so the pass the passive is marked on the like when the suffix with the verb, but you also have a a specific pref prefix still suff um, passive marker? Yes, because the uh, pass here, the other is um, to the, differentiate itself from the um, present perfect. It's like a, um, the other is like a auxiliary verb. Yes. Uh, I think that's really interesting. Have you have you idly wondered wh where that might be coming from, the za or aza? Mm, I only found it in this examples with a simple pass so mm -hmm. but um i have seen the other and i have seen its variation the uh, in i had one example where it was an other instead of an other so i think it's changes a bit yes which is really interesting because a of course like you like you've shown is sort of a perfect past ending so that might, would make a lot of sense um, it's interesting because I think you know one it's, it's one is very tempted to look at grammatization and see whether there's any lexical links so you know there you know za the, you know there's Swahili kudia which is not a million miles away to come, which we know um, grammaticalizes quite a lot. I think passive grammatization in Bantu mainly is with b, you know, with you know, if, unless it's like you know suffix but but I think that you know to the verb to be like li or ri or d d passives, um, but za in the context of passive I don't don't think I've seen but it's it's really interesting. Um, so, you know, to come and the other thing is to dawn. I think again, Southern Bantu has tense aspect marking grammatization, which has za, za, sa, um, to, 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 to dawn, to become new. Um, but that's tense aspect. Um, but that, that's a really interesting, interesting little fact. I think without looking further in the language, it's hard to tell. But if there's le you know, any lexical similarities, or any other context where you can see it, I think that would be really nice to find out. So something to look forward to in the uh, when you finally come to Tanzania, Peter, you can uh, you can do some further uh, some further looking. Um, do we have any other uh, questions or comments? No. Uh, well, I think that. All that leaves us is uh, to thank our speaker once again and all the effort that he put into the data analysis. Thank you very much, Peter. It was a pleasure.